back just a little bit. You know what it is when you hear that intro. If you got the green CD, some people call it the green CD. I want you to sing with my ladies. And I want you to sing it strong with them. You ready? Let's do this. Sunday. This is the day the Lord has made. Come on, let's rejoice and be glad in it. I am co-pastor Rashonda Pratt. I'm so glad to be with you. Those of you who are watching us in the online space, whether you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube, a big God bless you and thank you so much for being here. Listen, do me a favor. Those of you who are right there right now, 
watching on your mobile device, maybe you're casting the service to your big screen TV, watching on your laptop, however you are viewing us this morning, do me a favor and go ahead and check in in the comments section and let us know where you're watching from. We know we have a lot of people who watch us from the greater PD area here in South Carolina, whether it's Florence, Darlington, Sumter, Kershaw, or Florence counties. Listen, do us a favor, let us know where you're checking in from so that way we can shout out your city and state, amen? Also, if you haven't already done so, invite someone to this virtual winner's experience. You know how you do that? You hit the share button. You tag them in the comment section. Let them know that you have a virtual seat waiting for them because we believe one word from God can change your life forever. As you're engaging in the comment section and throughout service this morning, we have a virtual greeter who is going to be engaging in the comment section right along with you. So if you're a first timer, your first time ever being being here at Tabernacle of Champions. We'll have someone who's um, engaging in the comment section if you have any questions or you, if you need any assistance during this broadcast. Listen, though we are watching virtually, you're watching me virtually, I want you to understand that this is not a spectator sport, amen? This is an opportunity for you to participate in the service. And one way virtually that you participate in the service is you hit those hearts at the bottom of the screen. One way that you participate in the service is you tag or you share, whether you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube. One way that you could participate in the service is giving the emoji hands up. One way that you could participate participate in the service is actually participating in the service right where you are lifting up your hands opening your mouth celebrating the name of the Lord because he's worthy to be praised if you're able to watch this broadcast do what the scripture says do what the Bible encourages us to do that everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord you have a reason to celebrate because you're breathing my friend you have a reason to celebrate because you can still move your limbs you have a reason reason to celebrate because you're above ground and that's a reason to give him praise hallelujah so we're so excited so one way to help you get into the flow of praise and worship we have psalmist elder black who's going to take us further into the service i'm telling you don't just watch from your home turn up the volume and command your soul to bless the lord we'll be right back after this god bless you Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, go ahead and wake up. Hallelujah. Take all that stuff out of your eyes and begin to give God glory and praise because he's worthy. Hallelujah. We owe him that much. Hallelujah. And we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. So if you love him, it's going to work out for you. Anybody believe that? Yeah. And I know that all things work together for my good and i know that all things work together for my good say and i know yeah hallelujah and i know come on say it with us and i know yeah all things work together and i know yeah. Come on, say it with us. And I know that all things work. And I know it's going to work out for you, yeah. It's for my good. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. It's for my good. Everybody clap your hands. Somebody clap your hands. Anybody clap your hands? It's for, yeah. Hallelujah. It's for my good, yeah. Everybody clap your hands. Somebody clap your hands. Anybody clap your hands? Listen. And I know that all things work together for your good. And I know that all things work together for your good, yeah. I know it, I know it now. And I know that. I know it. Yeah, yeah. It's going to work out. I believe it. Hey, and I know that. Yes. It's for my good. Come on, I need somebody to get excited.
excited. It's for my good. Everybody clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. Somebody clap your hands. It's for. Hallelujah. It's for my good. Everybody clap your hands. Somebody clap your hands. Anybody clap your hands. Hey, Jesus said. I believe it, yes. I dance on it, dance on it. Why? He worked it out. He worked it out. Jesus said, I believe it. I dance on it, dance on it now. Why? He worked it out. He worked it out. Jesus said, I believe it. I dance on it, dance on it now. Hey, I dance on it, dance on it now. Hey, go on and dance about it. I dance on it, dance on it. I need somebody to get up and dance. Dance the promise belong to you. Hey, go on and dance. I'm gonna dance on it. Hey, oh, yeah. Hey, and I know that. All things work together for my good. And I know that all things work together for my good. Say it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel this thing. Hey. Hey. And I know. I know that I know that I know. And I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. I believe it. And I know. Hallelujah. It's for your good. It's for your Come on and celebrate Jesus in here. Come on, you might as well go on, get up out of your sofa and dance on it. I believe it. It's getting ready to happen. Hey, it's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's getting ready to happen. Hallelujah. It's getting ready to happen. Hallelujah. It's getting ready to happen for you. Hallelujah. We can sing that song and have confidence that all things are working together for our good because of what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter chapter 2 verse 14 and I want to read it to you out the NIV it says but thanks be to God come on thanks be to God who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere he's causing us to triumph ladies and gentlemen he's causing us to have the victory I know there's a lot of things that are going on in your life right now I don't know what that looks like but I'm telling you the things that are going on right now are working together for your good hallelujah I'm telling you it's joy is here wake up hallelujah it's working together for your good, and we're excited about it. The only person who's mad about it is the enemy. Hallelujah. We're excited about what God's doing because I'm telling you, you can't have a testimony without a test. Come on. A champion can't get a, a crown or get a trophy without first having a challenge. Come on. I'm trying to talk to somebody here. You can't have the victory unless there was a position or opportunity not to have the victory. Hallelujah. So champions eat challenges for breakfast. Hallelujah. All things work together for your good. Hallelujah. Friend. Right there. Come on, type that in. The, you have the victory. Type that in the comment section. Because it's working together for your good. And we're excited about it. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when challenges come, and that's just a part of life because the Bible says, listen, trials and tribulations are going to come. But be of good cheer. What did he say? We overcome the world. And so the promise that we have is, though there are challenges in your body, though there are challenges in your relationships, on your job, in your finances, in your mind, with your peace, we have the hope that, guess what? It's working together for our good, and we're going to come out on the other side of it, pure as gold. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. I'm excited about what God is doing for you, friend. I'm excited about what God is doing in your life. It's working together for your good. It's working. It's working. It's working. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. I'm excited about it. Listen, thank you for those of you who are just tapping in and tuning in. I'm co-pastor Rashonda Pratt here at Tabernacle of Champions. We're live on site right here um, at 29 Mindy Lane in Bishopville, South Carolina. And we know we have people who are watching all over the country and the world. And we thank you so much for watching our Sunday service. And thank you for being a part of this Sunday service. Go ahead and tag, invite someone to be a part. We want to uh, just let you know that one brief announcement that we are virtual today, right? We're doing all virtual our service today. But we're going to be back on site live and in person. It's going to be all the way live next Next Sunday at 10 a.m. And we want to invite you to come out and be a part of corporate fellowship. God honors community, ladies and gentlemen. He honors corporate fellowship. And we want to invite you to be a part of that corporate fellowship. So what does that look like? We're social distancing. Listen, we're asking you to wear your mask. We have uh, cleaning supplies and we have hand sanitizer all over the building. And we're doing our due diligence to make sure that we're creating a safe environment and safe experience, amen? And so we wanna invite you not just to partake in watching us online, that's great. We know we have people who are out of state and out of the country who do that. But for those of you who are local, for those of you who can get here to Bishopville, South Carolina, we want to invite you to come and be a part of this experience. There's something powerful. God says in the word of God, in Matthew, it says, when two or three together, gather together, there he is in the midst. Hallelujah. And so we believe as we come together, together in person, God is coming together with us. The Holy Spirit is showing up. Amen. And we want you to be a part. So remember, next Sunday, we're back live in person here at 29 Mindy Lane in Bishopville, South Carolina. Listen, we're getting ready to go further into the praise and worship experience. Remember, we just sang a song that says, all things are working together for our good. Listen, this is a declaration over your life. It's working for your good. Hallelujah. And because it's working for your good, you can freely worship the Lord. Amen. 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 Glory to God. How many of you all need the Lord? We need him every minute, every second, every hour of the day. We want him in our life. Hallelujah. I don't know about you all, but I'm desperate for him. I'm thirsty for him. And because I need him in my life, I'm running to him. I'm coming to him humbly at his feet. Hallelujah. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee every hour. I do need Thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to, to Thee. I need Thee, oh God, I need Every hour I need thee. Oh, oh, bless me. Oh, yeah, shut up. Bless me right now, my sweet and gentle Savior. I am coming. I'm coming to. Oh God, I need, I need you, oh, I'm in need of thee. Anybody need him on today? Every hour, God, I need to talk to you. Oh, 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 oh bless, bless me right now. My Savior, I come, I've got to come to you, oh Lord, yeah, 
I need the oh God. I'm searching for you. Hey, oh, every hour, God, I'm calling on you. Right now, my Savior, I'm coming to, to you, Lord. Hey, I need the hour, I need the air. Yes, I do. Every hour, God, I need you. Yes. Oh, bless. Bless me right now, my Savior. I'm coming. I got to come. God, I'm coming to you. It doesn't matter what the time of day, God, I'm coming. If I have to come alone, I'm crawling at your feet now. Yeah, yes. I come, I come to thee. Glory to God. How many of you need the Lord? Glory to God. We need Jesus. Every hour we need Jesus. We don't just need Jesus when everything is going difficult. We don't just need Jesus when times are rough and times are tough. We need Jesus every day, every hour, every minute, every second. You and I need Jesus. Know that I, just, I didn't exclude myself from that. I said that you and I need Jesus. Come on and testify to your neighbor right there in the comment section. Tell them that I need Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, say that with me. Say, I need Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible tells us that if we draw nigh unto him, he will draw nigh unto us. Why is he doing that? Because he knows that we need him. Hallelujah. And just as well as we need him, he needs us in the earth. Glory to God. Aren't you excited about that God needs you? Hallelujah. It's not just a one-sided equation, but is a both and. He needs you and you need him. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'm excited about what God is doing in your life. I'm excited about what God is doing in your family all around you. Glory to God. He did not bring you to this moment. He did not bring you into this life moment into this virtual moment just for you to come in and say I've been here no he brought you here because he has something he wants to get to you he has something that he wants to say to you and if you focus in if you uh, if you buckled in and if you focused in what God has to say to you if you open up your heart and open up your mind and say God I'm turning off the other television I'm turning I'm turning down my pot I'm turning I'm putting them in the children in the other room I'm cutting off all distractions because I need something from you. I guarantee you, he, you will not leave this live. You will not leave this digital winner circle disappointed because that is a promise from God. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that his truth will be our refuge, that his truth will be our shield, that his truth will be our buckler. And the truth of the matter is that God says, I will 
never leave you nor forsake you. The truth of the matter is that God says you are the apple of my eye. Glory to God. The truth of the matter is that God says that I love you and I will never. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, he says it three times. Glory to God. I will not. I will not. I will not. What is he trying to get to you? He's trying to let you know. Glory to God that you are never alone hallelujah glory to Jesus I thank God that I'm not alone I thank God that I have my wife and I have my children but when all things fail I know that I got Jesus by my side hallelujah glory to God he told the psalmist David, if you take the wings of a morning, you, I'll be there with you. He says, if you make your bed in hell, I will be there. Not just talking about the literal hell, but in the, in the lower parts of the earth. He said, I will be there in your most difficult situation and in your most high situation. It doesn't matter where you are. If you're on the mountaintop or in the valley low, glory to God. He says, I'm going to be there with you. Hallelujah. Are we excited about that glory? I done got happy in my sanctified soul. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. So go ahead and do me a favor. Go ahead and testify and pronounce this over somebody's life in that comment section. Say, I believe something good is about to happen to you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and say that to somebody else. Come on, put their name in the comment section and say, I believe something good is about to happen to you today. Glory to God. And then while you're typing that, right after you finish typing that, lay hands on yourself right there where you are. If you're on your couch, if you're on your bed, if you're in your front room at the, at the dinner table, glory to God, or at your office, glory to God. Come on and touch yourself and say, I believe something good is is about to happen to me today glory to God how can we say that because God promised hallelujah that I will have the good of the Lord in the land of the living hallelujah he said that you will see it in the land I don't have to wait till the sweet by and by I don't have to wait till I close my eyes here on earth and I get to heaven he says I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living that means right now now I can have it right now tomorrow it can be there for me when I leave this service when I leave this digital winner circle I can see the goodness of God hallelujah blessed be the name of Jesus we glorify him and we honor his name hallelujah Glory to God. Glory to God. And so I don't want to be before you long. Glory to Jesus. But I do want to make sure that I get to you what I believe the Lord wants you to know this morning. Praise the Lord. If you can turn with me in the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Book of Ephesians, and this is in verse 10, and it reads, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God has, has prepared before, ahead of time, that we shall walk therein. As a matter of fact, I just switched over into another version, so let me read it like it was supposed to be read. Glory to God. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Tell your neighbor, I should walk in the good plans of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And while you're, while you're there, I also want to read uh, Psalms chapter. Psalms chapter 139 for you. And in reading, reading in verse 14, and the Bible reads in Psalms 139, verse 14, it says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Hallelujah. I want to read this in two more versions so we can get a full understanding of what God is saying here. Glory to God. Uh, what, the, what the Bible is saying here in Psalms 139 verse 14. I want to read this in the Passion Version. That's the Passion Version of the Bible. And it reads, I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it, how thoroughly you know me, Lord. Can you, can you understand that the, that the God you serve, that the God, we, we, the creator of the universe knows you and I thoroughly? That he knows you to the nth degree? Hallelujah. He knows the hairs that are numbered on your head. And that's just not just the hair. He can con There's not just all the hairs, but he knows which hair falls from your head. Glory to God. He knows which hair it is. If it's one or it's one million two hundred and thirty six. He knows all of that. Glory to God. I want to read one more version. This is the easy to read version, and it reads, I praise you because you made me in such a wonderful way. I know how amazing that was. Glory to God. I want to talk about this morning the value of you. The value of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We love you so much, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are very present help in the time of trouble. You are very present help in any time. So, Father, we thank you for you being present here right now today. Glory to God. And, Father, we honor you for your presence. We honor you for your goodness. We honor you for your loving kindness towards us. Thank you for bringing us together for this moment. Even though we are virtual, Lord God, I thank you that your goodness and your power and your mercy, your grace, and your anointing is made available to anyone that will reach for it in Jesus name and father I humble myself under your hand and in your sight I declare that I am what I am by your grace I can do nothing without you I thank you Lord God for going beyond my preparation do what only you can do by your spirit I thank you for that in Jesus name I declare that the grace of God is upon my life now and enables me to preach and teach the word of God with simplicity with accuracy and with boldness and I thank you for it now in Jesus name Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell somebody that we're talking about the value of you. The value of you. And the reason why we're talking about the value of you, I started out this year, we started out this year telling you that God want you to make, you and I to make his story happen. He wants us to make history. And we broke that down, meaning he is that in, in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, it says that God has... God has created us unto good works, which he has before ordained, which means that he's created a path and he's created a story that we should walk in in it and that story is the is the story that we should be walking in we shouldn't be walking in just our own story but the story that God has prepared for us to walk in glory to God and many of us don't walk in the story because we don't know how valuable we are we choose to do other things. We choose that we have to try to gain up. We have to muster up value, that we have to pull up value, that we have to grow value. But no, the day that you and I were born, we were created valuable. Isn't that what Psalms 139 says? That we were fearfully and wonderfully made. We wasn't made broken. We wasn't made uh, without value. We weren't made poor. No, God made us valuable. He said, 
says he fearfully and wonderfully made us. That means he took his time to make you. He took his time to develop you. And every idiosyncrasy that you have, other people may see it as a flaw. Other people may see it as a failure. But God says, I uniquely made you like that, glory to God. And you don't have to change anything for anybody. I love you the way that you are, glory to God. And if I don't tell you to change, then you keep doing what you're doing, praise God. I've already prescribed the way for you, glory to God. And the prescription for your life is written in my word. The prescription for your life wasn't written by your mama. The prescription for your life wasn't written by your boss. The prescription for your life wasn't written by BET, MTV, VH1, Lifetime, or any other show or any other network. The prescription for our life was was prescribed and written by the hand of Almighty God. Come by, somebody get excited and praise God that you have a life that's worth living. Come on, praise God that God says my your life is in my hands. No man can take you out of it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so you have to understand that there's value in you. If you know anything about me, if you've been around me any, any length of time, you know that I love a good story, that I, I love a good movie. And what makes for a good movie is the storyline that it, that it portrays. Matter of fact, what makes a good song is the story that it tells. Everything that good has a, everything that's good has a story behind it. And many times we don't see ourselves as being good because we don't even know our own story. What if I told you that there was a, a, a great man that created you? What if I told you that you came from royalty? What if I told you that you were not created on the other side of the track, but you were created in the king's house, that you are, you are a king's kid? What if I told you that you are a prince undercover? Or a princess undercover. Would you, would you believe that you had value then? Well, let me go ahead and tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you are a prince or a princess undercover. You are a king and a queen undercover. And what is it that you're, that's, un, that's covering you? It's the things that you've experienced in life. Life is trying to trying to cover and 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 go over and pull over all pull the wool over your eyes and have you thinking that there's no value in you that there's nothing to you praise God but I'm here to tell you that God has put something great on the inside of you he's put something great on the inside of me and we should spend the rest of our life uncovering what that great thing is hallelujah Tell your neighbor, I have something great on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Even when you watch commercials, the best commercials on television tell a great story. I, 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 we, love, we love sitting on the couch and my wife and I, we're watching different shows and then a commercial comes up and she said, man, that is a good commercial. Man, that is a great commercial. And what is she saying? She's saying that commercial tell, tells a great story. One of the commercials that she, she loves that tells a great story is Publix. Publix always puts a story with their commercials. I couldn't tell you exactly 1.1 out for you, but if you go back and you, matter of fact, you just go on YouTube and pull up Publix commercials, you will see the stories that they tell. And what I'm telling you is the best things have the greatest story. So what does that mean for you and I? I'm telling you today that you and I have a great story. But here's the problem. We spend too, too much time with other people's story and we don't even focus on our own. We buy other people's stories. See, the reason why Publix is telling that story is because they want you to come and experience their store. 
They want you to come and experience what they have to offer. So they tell you a story hoping and believing that when you feel the way this story makes you feel, when you pull up in the parking lot, that feeling that you had on your couch, you'll begin to have in the parking lot. That feeling that you had on your couch when they were telling you that story, you'll begin to have when you walk through the door. And we buy their story. We buy the story of Nike. We buy the story of Reebok. We buy the story of Jay-Z. We buy the story of Beyonce. We buy the stories of all of these other people. And we we celebrate their story, but we neglect to celebrate our own story. We neglect to celebrate that God said, I fearfully and wonderfully made you. We neglect to celebrate that we were created by the hand of Almighty God. We neglect to celebrate that God said, I created you in my image and in my likeness. I created you to represent me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And to be an image of me, we neglect to to celebrate this and we gloss over it and we think that this is all that we are. All that we are are skin and bones. But ladies and gentlemen, we are much more than the skin that we have. As a matter of fact, you are really not the skin that you have. That skin is a suit that you need to live here on earth. But the real you, the real us is the spirit that was created. The real us that was that was the essence of God that was blue that was blown into Adam's nostril. The Bible says that he created Adam from the dust of the ground. And then he said, I blew into Adam's nostrils the breath of life, the the ruah. He blew in the nephesh of of Adam. And then he said, Adam became a living soul. So this suit was created by the dust of the ground, but Adam wasn't in the suit until God blew in him. Hallelujah. And what I'm trying to tell you that when you came out of your mother's womb when you begin to cry that was God blowing in your nostrils glory to God and every day we wake up God is blowing in us every day we exhale and inhale glory to God God says I'm blowing in you my life I'm blowing in you my strength glory to God and there is something on the inside of you that I need you to get out hallelujah blessed be the name of Jesus hallelujah So the problem is we spend too much time with other people's stories and we don't have time for our own. We promote their story while neglecting our own story. We spend too much time with theirs and not enough time with ours. We read about their story, but yet won't write our own story. I was convicted. I was, I'm working right now on getting my Masters of Divinity. And one of the assignments, the final assignment for this class to make sure that I graduate, the final assignment, the, the professor said that I needed to write a, write a thesis. And this thesis is my life story. He said that that the reason why I want you to write your life story is because it's going to be a legacy for the people who come after you. And he began to talk about how many people live and die and nobody knew that they lived. But when you write your life story, you etch it in stone. You etch it in on a piece of paper. You etch it in a book. And now it's there for centuries gone by. It's there for your mother. It's there for your children. It's there for your grandchildren. It's there for your great-grandchildren, your nieces and your nephews and everybody else that will pick up that story, that book of yours, and read it and begin to know what you have experienced. You do know that what you've experienced is not just you. It's not just for you, but it's for the people who are coming after you. It's for the people who are looking to you that you don't even know are looking unto you. And so we need to be able to to write our own story. Why do we need to do this? It's because when we don't count something valuable, we neglect it. 
the reason why that old car you had, you ran it up and down the road, you wouldn't wash it, you wouldn't do anything to it because you didn't deem it value. All it was worth to you is getting you from point A to point B. But the moment you buy a new car, you can't keep from keeping it from the car wash. You can't keep from detailing it. You can't keep from wiping down the tires. And if anybody puts, anybody tries to step in your car after walking on the grass or walking on the dirt, you're telling them to dust, the, dust their feet off before they get into the car. Why? Because we are deeming that valuable. See, we treat things different that we value. And what I want, I want to know is, how are we treating ourselves? Are we treating ourselves like an old broken down car? Or are we treating ourselves like a top of the line vehicle? Bishop Marcus used to say there's a difference between a Prius and a Lexus. There's the difference between a Prius and a Bentley. Why? You can go to a dealership and find a Prius. Matter of fact, you will see commercials about a Prius. But in order for you to find a Bentley, you have to go find it. You have to go looking for it. As a matter of fact, you have to, you have to order this Bentley. They just don't, you just don't walk to a Bentley lot. I've never seen a Bentley lot. What, what are they trying to tell you? This car is so valuable that we don't, we don't mass produce it. Oh, I hope you're hearing me. This car is so valuable that we don't, va we don't mass produce it. We, we, we produce it for the person who ordered it. That the Bentley that is, that is made, the Bentley that is produced is tailored for the buyer. Oh, I hope you're hearing me. The Bentley that is produced is tailor-made for the buyer. And ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to get, all, get across to you this morning is, ladies and gentlemen, that God didn't mass produce Jacobi's. God didn't mass produce uh, uh, Anita's. God didn't mass produce Rashonda. God didn't mass produce a David or an Adrian or a Carl or, or, or a Jael or a Jamin or whatever your name is. God did not mass produce you. He only made one. Hallelujah. And it was tailor made. Glory to God. It was tailor made for the buyer who is the buyer the buyer was jesus christ himself glory to god how did he buy you he shed his blood on calvary glory to god hallelujah he hung from the sixth to the ninth hour the crown of thorns on his head nails in, in his feet and in his hand a javelin in his side glory to god hallelujah and he bought you with his precious blood hallelujah he showed you the value of you when he died for us. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Romans, it says that for a righteous man, one would dare to die. But then it goes on to say that Christ showed his love towards us, that he died for us while we were yet Somebody say yet. While we were yet in our sin. That lets you know, ladies and gentlemen, that even while we were sinners, glory to God, we still had value. Hallelujah. Why you broken, you still got value. Why you sick in your body, you still got value. Why you have any money in your pocket, you still have value. Why people are talking about you, you still have value. Glory to God. Why you still can't see from, uh, you can't see ahead of you. You can't see 10 years down the road, ladies and gentlemen, we still have value. Tell your neighbor, I still got value. I still got it, glory to God. I believe that's a, tell you, that should be put on a shirt. I still got it, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Come on and let somebody know I still got it. Hallelujah. Though I've been though I've been mistreated, I still got it. Hallelujah. Though things didn't go all right, they, though things didn't work out the way that I wanted to go, I still got it. Though I'm in my though I'm in my 60s, I still got it. Though I'm in my 80s, I still got it. Though I mismanaged my 20s and my 30s, I still got it. Hallelujah. As long as I got breath in my body, I still got it. Hallelujah. Because God is still working in me. He's still working on me. And and he, I'm not using that as a, as a mantra to keep doing what I'm doing. What I'm saying is that God is still working in you to bring out that value that he placed on the inside of you. Hallelujah. So you and I were created by a masterful creator. And you have to understand that everything that God created was good. <laughs> oh, I like that. You and I were created by a masterful creator, and everything this masterful creator makes is good. As a matter of fact, this masterful creator never, somebody say never, this masterful creator never makes trash. Every instance that we see in the book of Genesis where God is creating, after everything he creates, he calls it good. He creates the heavens and the earth. He creates the stars in the sky. He, he separates uh, the clouds from the waters from beneath. He puts the sun, the moons, and the stars in the sky. And he says the morning, the, the night, and the morning was the, was the first day. And he called everything that he created in, in that day good. Then he goes on to the next day. He starts to create again. He starts to put birds. No, he starts to put vegetation in the, on the ground. And he starts to put all of these things on the ground and every day that he creates after he finishes he says is good but ladies and gentlemen what did God say after he made us he just didn't say that we were good he changed his adjective when he called when he talked about us as a matter of fact, he added a superlative. I'm hoping I'm getting that right. He added a superlative to the adjective of good. He said not only were we good, he said we were very good. Which means that ladies and gentlemen, in your worst state, you're still very good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so understand that God did not create trash. He did not create create. Uh, he did not create uh, uh, things that didn't have value. Glory to God. We don't buy. We don't buy things that don't have value. Here's another thing that we need to understand. Here's the thing that you need to understand. Thieves don't steal that don't, uh, uh, don't steal things that don't have value. The enemy, the thief that comes into your house doesn't come to your house to steal dust. <laughs> it doesn't, they, they, they don't come to steal your tablecloth. They don't come maybe to steal um, your pillows. Maybe if they were homeless, they might steal your pillows. But most, most, most thieves don't come into the house and steal those uh, those penny any things. No, they come in for jewelry. They come in for money. They think they come in for gold, silver, things that have value. Glory to God. And what am I trying to say? The Bible tells us in John 10, 10, it says the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Why is the thief coming? He's not coming to steal from you because you don't have anything of value. He's coming to you because he knows that God has put something on the inside of you and he wants it. He don't want you to develop it. He don't want you to understand what you have. That's why he's trying to steal it. That's why he's trying to kill it. That's why he's trying to destroy it. But ladies and gentlemen, if you came to understand that what the enemy knows, glory to God, you'll become something dangerous. 
if you really understood what the enemy knows about you, glory to God, and he doesn't know everything there is, then all he knows is a glimpse. All he has was a glimpse of what God wanted to do in your life. He said, oh, I got to go get that. Oh, I got to go kill that. Oh, I got to go destroy that. And all he saw was a glimpse, glory to God, but you can have it in his fullness. Hallelujah. You have it in his fullness, glory to God, and you need to do something with it. We need to do something with the glory to God. Hallelujah. So, when we allow Jesus to be the director and the developer of our story, he begins to bring life to it. I remember hearing certain directors talk about uh, casting certain uh, actors or actresses in a, in, in, a, in a film, and they said all, that, all they had was words on a page, but when they brought in someone, this person or whoever it was, they brought the, they brought the script to life. And when Jesus comes on, this, on the scene, he brings the script of your life to life. He animates it, glory to God. Hallelujah. And though we were once two-dimensional, glory to God, he makes us three-dimensional. He brings the third dimension to us. Somebody say the third dimension. And that third dimension is the Holy Spirit, glory to God. That the Holy Spirit comes and he, and he brings life and he brings power. He brings uh, authority to you, glory to God. And he makes you alive, hallelujah. The Bible tells us that the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells within us and makes alive our mortal body. That body that was subject to die, that body that was subject to decay. That story that was subject to decay, bring it, the Holy Spirit brings life to it. And now you're able to walk it out with fullness of joy. Glory to God. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know tonight, what this morning, that you have value. No matter what's been going on in your life, no matter what people have said about you, no matter what you've said to yourself, God is telling you that you have value. That he didn't die for someone that he didn't care about. He didn't die for someone that didn't have immense value Psalms 139 14 says we were fearfully and wonderfully made he took his time with you he developed you and he's saying today go out and be all that I've created you to be don't allow the things that come that came after cre the creation change the creation. Did you hear what I said? Don't allow the things that happened after the creation change the creation. See, God created you with something immense of value. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. So, ladies and gentlemen, though you were created from the dust of the ground, you have the treasure of God on the inside of you. So let him, let him break out of that earth box. Let him break out of your treasure chest, of that treasure chest called you, and begin to bless the people around you. Because ladies and gentlemen, when people come to understand the value of you, well, scratch that. When you come to understand the value of you, everybody else will understand the value of you. God bless you. 
we praise God. It's now time that we receive our offering. Glory to God. We, we praise God that uh, you received something from today's service. Glory to God. And may, would you, maybe you want to give a gift to the Lord that, 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 uh, that exemplifies the value that you have. I can't tell you exactly what to give. You pray about it and you ask God, God, what do I need to give today? Hallelujah. And once you give that gift that you believe exemplifies your value, understand that you have, a, a, you don't, you can't really put a dollar amount on your value. But you should put a dollar amount that says, this means something to me. And I'm going to give it because I mean something to God. This gift means something to me because I mean something to God. And you give that gift. Scrolling across the bottom of your screen right now is telling you how to give. There are three ways that you can give. You can give via text to give, and that number is 803-897-8009. You can also give via Cash App, and that Cash App ID is dollar sign TOC 2020. Y'all can give by the, via the web, and that web address is www.easytie.com forward slash winner circle. Hallelujah. And as you're giving, we're going to pray over your gifts, and then we're going to confess the word over your gifts as well. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this opportunity to give. Some are given their tithes, some are given their first fruit, some are given their offering, but whatever, whatever they're given, whatever measure that they're given, I pray in Jesus' name that they are given it in faith. They're given it as a representation of the value that they have, the value that you placed on the inside of them. As I said before, the gift should mean something to them because you mean something, they mean something to you. Glory to God. And we thank you, Lord God, for the promises that you, uh, that you told us that we would have when we give. You said that when we give, hallelujah, it will be given back to us, pressed down, shaken together, running over with men given to our bosom. You said that when we give, hallelujah, you will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. You said that our vine will not cast its fruit before the time in the field, but it will bring forth in its season, glory to God. You said that all nations would rise up and call us blessed and we thank you for it now we thank you for the grace of the living God being upon our life and causing us to be fruitful unto every good work and to every charitable donation we thank you for it now we give you the praise for it now in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah celebrate right there with with your gift glorify god in your gift hallelujah as pastor rashonda comes up and leads us in our champions talk glory to god let's get ready to say something to god amen Praise the Lord. Wasn't that a good message? Man, I was back there cutting us. Listen, that was such a timely word. I was so blessed by that, so encouraged by that. I'm telling you, you need to keep that on repeat in your house. There's some people you need to tag, some people you need to share. You need to go get that. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And some of you need a boost in your self-esteem and your self-worth. Come on, I'm going to give my little sermonette and then we're going to confess the word. For some of you, the reason why you in this bad relationship with this guy who hasn't proposed yet or this woman who hasn't said yes because you haven't understood the value of you. Come on. The reason why your boss treats you the way that they do is because you haven't understood the value of you. The reason why your children are stepping all over you like a doormat is because you haven't understood the value of you. Because when you understand the value of you, how you position yourself changes. And here's the thing, when I'm talking about understanding the value of you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not talking about going off on people. Because when you understand the value of you, you can let the Lord fight your battles. Hallelujah. You, when you understand the value of you, you can pull a Tabitha Brown. Hallelujah. And you don't have to go off rolling your neck and telling Wendy Williams off. You can say, God bless you. I hope you find someone who will sacrifice their love for you. That was her ministering and talking about Jesus. See, she understands the value of her. 
This is a good message. I'm telling you, I was so blessed by this word. I am so excited. I'm telling you, Sister Black, I feel like the value of me just increased. Hallelujah. I feel like my value portfolio and my stock just increased. Hallelujah. So, man, when I make these confessions and when you make these confessions at home, I'm telling you, I want you to understand, you're speaking from a higher place of value. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So repeat after me. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will walk in the wellness of God. This is my receiving week. This is my week of the unprecedented to manifest in my life. This is my week of supernatural increase. I have unprecedented influence. I'm living in God's overflow. God keeps his promises and he won't fail with me. What belongs to me is being released this week, hallelujah. My seed sown in faith will grow up in faith. I'm productive and it produces godly fruit. I believe it. I receive it to the glory of God. Amen. We believe that for you and we're looking forward to the testimonies as Pastor Pratt comes up and closes out service. We are excited about what God is doing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is our receiving week because we have immense value, glory to God. And we love God and we love ourselves. Hallelujah. I think that's a t-shirt too. I love God and I love myself. Many people focus on the loving God part and you should love God, but you need to love yourself just as much. Glory to God. A matter of fact, Jesus said this when he was praying for us in the garden of Gethsemane. He said, I thank my God that you love me just as much as you love them. Hallelujah. Did you hear that? That God loves us just like he loves Jesus Christ. What is he trying to tell you? That you have value. That we have value. So ladies and gentlemen, as you leave out of this digital winter circle this morning, go out of his understanding that you have value in the earth. That you have value on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And it's not contingent upon who you're with. Did you hear what I said? It's not contingent upon who you're with or who says what about you. It's contingent upon what God has said and what God has placed on the inside of you. So we praise God for you. We thank you for joining us. You could have been anywhere in this digital space, but you decided to come upon the digital winner circle and we thank you for being here. We love you, we appreciate your understand that we're here every Sunday at 10 o'clock and on every Thursday at seven o'clock at the digital winner circle. If you wanna come and meet with us physically, you can do that. We're right here at 29 Mindy Lane, Bishopville, South Carolina. Yes, we are still socially distanced. Yes, we're still practicing COVID protocols, all the things praise God and you will have your safety is the of the utmost importance to us because we love you just like God loves you praise God so we appreciate you being here we want you to remember that this is the place where you can encounter Jesus build relationships and become a champion God bless you and we'll see you again next week God bless you